Welcome to Yankee on the Prairie. Today we are at the Oklahoma City Bricktown Canal. The construction of the Bricktown Canal was completed in July of 1999, I believe it was, at a cost of about $102 million, if I remember correctly. It was modeled after the canal in San Antonio, Texas. There are shops and walkways along the canal. The canal is about a one mile long canal. There are river taxis that run on the canal. The name river taxi, however, is somewhat of a misnomer because the taxis have one stop point to pick up people and let people back off. So really it is a tour more so than a taxi. Uh, along this route, we're going to look at a few of the things. Actually behind me, right here, you see one of the taxis parked. They are electric run taxis, uh, so they do not pollute the water. And then uh, let's take a look and let's walk around and see what we can find along the way. Both sides of the canal at this point, there are some restaurants, uh, tasty restaurants at that. Uh, let's take a look over here across the way. Right now it's uh, not very crowded. That restaurant there I believe is the Bourbon Street Cafe. Uh, it is a nice little place to go. The food is pretty good. The service is pretty good. It's worth a little night out, a date night if you will. Uh, long here we go. Here comes one of the water taxis now with some passengers on it. And it's even pretty light today. Not many people on the water taxi taking a tour of the canal. And right next to us here we are at the Tipsy Tiki. The Tipsy Tiki is a, uh, well, it says right there, Dockside Bar. And that's what it is. It is just a hangout spot on the canal. There are essentially two levels at this point. The lower level is where there are walkways and restaurants. And the upper level, let's pan up a little bit here. There is the candy company is up there and a taco stand is up there with a patio for you to hang out on and eat whatever you grab. The candy company has some interesting sodas and a whole bunch of different candies, hard to find candies. And there are these walkways that go underneath the streets as you wander around the canal and there are benches along the way for you to sit on. And as you can see, there is also artwork throughout the path for you to look at. And here we see some ducks just kind of chilling out. They are pretty common along the route. But those ducks, they're pretty much not afraid of people. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, but they are so used to the people at this point that they tend to not run away from people as you walk along this path. Now in this section here, it's still under redevelopment. There's not a whole lot over here. They're working on it. And at the end, when we get down there, there is a waterfall and a mural. So let's walk down there and take a look. As we approach the one end of the canal, you'll see there's a mural on the wall. Uh, people pouring water out and nice little waterfalls. Up above this is actually the Amtrak train line, which also carries a lot of freight trains through here. But Amtrak stops here and then heads on down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is where this train tends to go. I'm not sure how many people really utilize it, but it is there. And as we look around, we see another mural. And here's another shot back down the canalway. So that's really all that's at this end. Right when the uh, water taxis come through here, they do use this wider area to turn the water taxi around and head back the other way. As you can see, it's a very well-maintained area. <clears throat> they work very hard at keeping it nice and an enjoyable place to be. The waterway is maintained by the Oklahoma City Parks and Recreation Department. And currently they are putting new lights in along the pathway here. Uh, about a year ago from what I could find on the news articles, there was a gentleman who fell into the canal. And when he tried to climb out of the canal, he grabbed onto a light fixture. The light fixture broke off and then he tried to grab the wires. Well, as you can imagine, grabbing live wires when you're in the canal 
wasn't the wisest of choices, and unfortunately, he is no longer around to tell about his story. There was another gentleman who did go in after him, who also became injured trying to help him. So, I guess moral of the story, when there's live electric wires, don't touch them. And if there is somebody touching the live electric wires, don't touch them either. The waterway was paid for by taxpayers in what was called the MAPS program. The MAPS program was a 1% or what they called a 1 cent sales tax in the city of Oklahoma City. And through the MAPS program, they raised enough money to build the canal as well as do other improvement projects around Oklahoma City. The program worked so well that they are now on MAPS 4. They've decided to continue it when the MAPS program expired and they kept the program going to continue to do more improvements. Across the way here is a mini golf type area. The mini golf course is fun. It has quite a few things on it, even though it's in a kind of crammed area. So although it may be small in space, it still has, I believe it has a full 18 holes of fun little things to play in mini golf, as well as it has the trampolines with the bungee cords that wrap around you and a rock climbing wall. And then right here at the end of it, they have a little bar area where you can grab regular drinks or you may grab a adult beverage as well after enjoying a round of mini golf. And here the canal takes a turn. This is actually the area where you would board the water taxis and take your one mile ride as the boat captain gives you a tour of the canal and they are really good at telling you the story about the area. Now this sculpture here is called Inclined and it is a sculpture that is supposed to be kind of a tribute to what this area used to be which was, Bricktown was a lot of warehouses, and this is supposed to resemble the uphill battle for people who worked in the warehouses. So that's what this is. Here's a better shot of the uh, mini golf course. There are a lot of points along the way where you can walk back up to street level, and at the other end, the canal is actually at street level. But as you see here, it's a little grass hill up to street level, or you can take the stairs. Now, right across from us is the Chickasaw Nation ballpark, which is where the Oklahoma City Dodgers, which I believe is a minor league team, plays baseball. So on the right are some apartments as well as some restaurants, two levels of restaurants, the Starbucks, Sussies, Heyday. Heyday is actually on the lower level and then the sushi bar are all on the top level. And the bottom level has Heyday and the Boomerang. And inside the Heyday, it's kind of a fun plex. They have some bowling alleys in there. They're small bowling alleys, but they have bowling lanes, if you will, and a nice little seating area to eat. And up above here, we have a uh, movie theater. It is the Harkins Movie Theater. It is the downtown movie theater, but it is right here on the waterway. And as we come around here, up on the left, there's another staircase, and there is a Sonic shop, a Fuzzy's Taco, as well as there's a, uh, like a courtyard type area that goes out to the street where on weekends there are sometimes bands playing and a lot of fun activities happening in that little courtyard area. Now across the way again, there is a Earl's Rib Palace, which is an Oklahoma barbecue joint. I believe they have seven or eight locations around the Oklahoma City area. They are very good barbecue. And there is a marble slab kind of tucked in behind the tree here. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. There it is, a marble slab ice cream shop. Um, so if you ever get a chance to visit a Earl's Rib Palace, they are excellent barbecue. 
well worth the visit. Now as we come up to this section, on our left is actually what used to be the Sonic Headquarters. Behind me is the Sonic Headquarters building, or what used to be the Sonic Headquarters building. And I say used to because Sonic was bought out by the parent company to Arby's. And when they bought Sonic, they made an announcement that day that said they were going to keep everything with Sonic exactly as it was, including continuing to use the Sonic Headquarters building as the headquarters to Sonic. However, the day after the purchase was complete, my understanding is they released many people from their positions and there are not nearly as many people in this building anymore. And most of the corporate functions and senior management functions happen in the Arby's headquarters or at least the headquarters for the parent company to now both Arby's and Sonic. So this building is still here and it is still used as far as I understand. And there we do see one person has come out of the building, so there are still a few people here. And across from the Sonic building, we also have two restaurants. The one restaurant is Charleston's that we are looking at here. And on the other side of the Charleston's, we have a Toby Keats. Uh, both restaurants offer delicious food, fantastic staff. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Oklahoma City is the home or was the former home, if not the current home, to many, many country music stars. Uh, Toby Keith was born and raised only about 35, 40 minutes from Oklahoma City. Garth Brooks, same thing. He was born and raised in the city of Yukon, which is probably about 30 minutes away from where we're standing right now. And Garth Brooks still lives in the general area. I believe he does not live in Yukon anymore, but he does live somewhere near Yukon. I'm not sure where. Uh, Carrie Underwood, she comes from Chakota, which I believe is an hour and a half to two hours away from where we are right now. And there are many, many more country stars that actually come from this area. You'll see there's a water feature here. This water feature is also part of the filtration for the canal. Now the canal is only three feet deep and it is drained every once in a while while during winter time and that is when they clean the bottom of the canal. Typically when they clean the canal they find a couple of bikes, a couple of scooters and some miscellaneous trash but usually there isn't much there. But they do drain it every couple of years to make sure that they keep the canalway clean. On the left here is a hotel. I believe it's a Marriott, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see if we can find a name on it. All right, well, it would appear as though I was only partially correct on the name of this hotel. It is a Residence Inn by Marriott. Let's spin around and take a look. And there we have it. The hotel on the waterway is a residence inn by Marriott. So I get partial credit for knowing the Marriott part, but I was not correct. It is not a full-blown Marriott. It is a residence inn by Marriott. Now the canal here takes a little turn and we're following the little pathway along as we go. So here we are looking at a monument. It is quite a large mon monument. We will walk around it a little bit. That is a tribute to the land run of 1889. What had happened was there was unassigned lands that were open through a land run with more than 50,000 Americans who wanted to establish a homestead in this land. So at noon on April 22, 1889, competitors rushed in on wagons, horses, foot, trains, whatever method they could use when they heard that cannon blast, when they got the okay, they went running across what is now the state line to stake their claim. And the land prior to that was mostly native land. And Oklahoma still has a lot of native people who live here. Uh, quite a few Indian tribes 
are here in Oklahoma. And there are a lot of different places where you can visit the tribe headquarters or nationalities. Uh, they do refer to them as tribal nations and many of them are here in Oklahoma. Now, one thing that most people don't realize about tribes is that they don't typically just live on reservations. In Oklahoma, there are a lot of Native Americans now who they live in standard houses and standard towns amongst everybody else. Uh, most of them you wouldn't even know were Indian except for the fact that they tend to have uh, skin that looks a little bit more Hispanic than white. And a lot of the people who have that skin tone and the darker hair may or may not be of Indian descent. Here is a better view looking at this monument. And as you see, it does actually cross over the canal. Over here we see a woman on a horse. We see a uh, wagon with a couple on it. We see a gentleman riding his horse. And I believe as we come around, there is actually a fallen horse as well, which would have happened in a massive land run. Let's take a look over here. I believe, oh, we even have a little dog. Couple more men on horses. Uh, one of them, his hat had blown off apparently, and it's bouncing off of the wagon behind him. Yes, here we have a dog and unfortunately one man and his horse fell as they were making their run. But it is quite the impressive monument to the land run. A lot of detail and it is very large as you can see. You can spend a lot of time here just looking at the detail and the beauty of what had been constructed. And it definitely gives you a little bit of an appreciation for what people went through when they were part of the land run to come to what is now Oklahoma and stake their claim in unassigned land. As we walk along here, on our left is the original drainage and boat canal of Oklahoma City. Uh, on that canal now, there is the Olympic row team and row practices. Uh, some of the colleges also have row teams here and boat houses on that canal. Uh, that canal had originally just become defunct land, for lack of a better way to describe what it was. And I believe it was also part of a MAPS program. I don't know if it was MAPS 1, 2, or 3, or 4. They are on MAPS 4 now. Uh, well, definitely not 4 because 4 is brand new. But they used some of that money to improve that area. And now it's a very impressive place to be as well. And maybe on one of these videos, we'll go over there and take a look. So make sure you press that subscribe button if you want to see more information and see more videos as they come out. And here we've reached the other end of the canal. This is actually where they load the boats in. It is not for public use. Only the Oklahoma City water taxis are in here. And the Oklahoma City water taxis are a private run organization. Meanwhile, the canal is maintained by Oklahoma City Parks and Recreation. So down here is where, if they do the full length of the canal, do the full tour, this is where they will turn around. Otherwise, they turn around back by that hotel. And hiding in the trees here, we see another piece of the sculpture. Let's see if we can get that man into view here. It's just a man and his horse who seem to be a little bit separated from the pack. I don't see any plaques here that explain 
who this is or why he's separated, but nonetheless, he is here. All right, we have walked around to the other side of the canal. I walked right around the end there, and we are now at where the Land Run Monument is running towards. So the first guy there seems to be holding a flag. I guess he's getting ready to stake his claim. And as you can see how large this monument really is, continues for quite a distance. And to give you a sense of the enormity of these pieces, let me flip the camera around. All right, so we are going to turn and see if we can get one of these pieces in the shot here with me. As you can see, I'm about five foot nine, five foot 10, and this sculpture is much, much, much larger than I am. So it is a very large sculpture that they have here or monument that took a long time to put in, I'm sure, but it is pretty impressive. Thank you for joining me today on this tour of the Oklahoma City Canal. Go ahead and click that subscribe button to be notified about more exciting journeys as we continue around and look at neat things. You can also click that notification bell to be notified when new things are posted. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.